Now, now, did y'all hear D'Angelo White on the phone? He he's did a phone call with uh, he called up Bennett, and he had a conversation with Bennett and describing pretty much what happened, and he's telling. Uh, um, he's telling D'Angelo White is essentially explaining the entire situation. He's like, yeah, because I'm, I'm assuming by by the point where he made the call to the detective, he found out from the hood what happened. He essentially knew, OK, O.J. Bentley thought we was following them. So they shot at us pretty much. He thought we was following them. He made some calls some, like D'Angelo White is from the same neighborhood that all of these guys are from. He just happened to be in a car with some people that was driving reckless or whatever. So pretty much what he said on the phone is that his homeboy talked to the lady that was with OG Bentley and the lady told uh, her name was Tina. I think they said, but Tina told them why or asked them pretty much. Why was y'all driving like that behind us? Like he, he thought y'all was like trying to follow us or something. And the guy who was driving Neil was like, no, nah, we wasn't following y'all. So while OG Bentley is in the store scared for his life, thinking they're about to rob him or whatever. His woman is outside talking to the guys that he think is supposedly about to rob him, right? Which I thought was weird because I'm just like side sidebar. If you thought these people was about to rob you, why did you leave your woman and these kids outside in the car with the with the supposed robbers? So so some people were saying like he pretty much wasn't he didn't think they was about to rob him. He really called up the shooters because they he thought they was trying to talk to his girl. Either way. That situation did not have to go like that, man, at all, especially when the person that you're in the car with a woman is outside talking to the people that you think is about to rob you. That that don't even make no sense. So uh, shout out to everybody involved. But you didn't, you didn't have to make the call to the shooters about that. OK, so. So and you know what was so grimy about this situation? So y'all remember when uh, y'all remember when D'Angelo White was on the stand, they hid his identity because they felt like I, I for whatever reason, they didn't want to show him. Right. But after they played the phone call, of course, what do they do? They bring up a picture of D'Angelo White and say, hey, like for I'm talking about literally seconds, only seconds after that phone call. They put him on the screen for everybody, for the world to see. They 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 didn't hide him. You know, they didn't hide the picture from us as the audience. They could have kept that picture hidden and only showed Detective Gaither. But they showed everybody, showed the world and said, is this a picture of D'Angelo White? She said, yes. And then they moved on from that. They didn't. So they showed his picture literally to the world for seconds after keeping him hidden when he was testifying. And and this is what I'd be saying about attorney love. They once a witness does not give them what they want, they burn you. They don't care if everybody is because he was clearly snitching. He was on the phone telling back then in, in 2015, which but he's he was a victim. So he was he was on the phone talking to the police and all that, saying how, you know, uh, my homies wasn't going to tell you nothing, but I, I, you know, I mess with y'all or whatever. So he on, the, he on the phone telling, and then y'all put the picture out of the man, and the, most of the world didn't know what he looked like after y'all tried to protect his identity, but because he didn't tell y'all what y'all wanted on the stand. Like, I didn't, that's grimy. Like I said, they keep on doing grimy stuff every time they don't get what they want. Um, but in, in, it's, it's on us now to <laughs> do the same thing, you know? So then they put they put my man D'Angelo White's picture up there. And I thought that was grimy. I'm only doing it as an asset because if I don't, the people watching will cuss me out. Now, that was grimy. He was a young boy at that time. Like he he, you know, he was he ain't have to do that to the man. Okay. So they put D'Angelo White picture out there, like Attorney Love and um Attorney Love and Simone Hilton. They are so grimy to the people that's supposed to be helping them out with testimonies. They so grimy. Like, if you don't say what we want, we're going to blast you. We hope you're going to lose your job. Like, all type of stuff. People have been getting fired over this. Like, all type of stuff. So then, after that, then they play a an interview where D'Angelo White is actually also helping some more out. He's helping them some more. He calls them again and says, or not, I don't know exactly how they set it up, but he lets them know, I'll, dry, I'll take y'all. I'll take y'all to the location where the shooting happened. Uh, I'll take y'all to a, to the location where the shooting happened. So they pretty much went in and picked him up from wherever he was at by Cleveland Avenue or whatever. This is, I think, 20 minutes after he just got off the phone with with uh, investigator Dennis. He they come pick him up from wherever he was at in the Cleveland Avenue area, or, you know, somewhere on the south side, like southeast side somewhere. And 
They pick him up. He they drive. So he's telling them like, go over here and do all this. He's giving them directions to the spot. He's literally in the car with Detective Gaither, invest uh, Detective Dennis, and then one other person. I can't think of the name. They said, but that person was quiet. They really didn't say anything. And he's telling them. So then you know he gets in the he gets in the car and eventually he's telling them like, yo, y'all gonna have to give me twenty dollars for my um for me doing this, like, because I, I don't, I don't do this, and y'all gonna have to give me $20, I just thought this was hilarious, and this is go, this will go to something that I said last week about, about, um, Detective Gaither, right, and about, I feel like Detective Gaither is, I feel like Detective Gaither is connecting with the jury, because she, she seems just more real, when you hear the clip of her going off on him about that $20, it's just hilarious to me, I thought it was funny. I mean, y'all let me know how y'all felt about it, but I thought it was funny. Very funny, actually. Uh, I'm like, I'm like, what's going on with my boy? He thought he was about to get that off. Uh, I don't I don't really know what he thought he was about to get off right there. But uh, it was funny, though. I I have to say it was funny. Uh, Is it playing? No, it's not playing. Okay. I couldn't I couldn't hear that, so let me uh go ahead and get that off of there. We're gonna play we are going to play uh well you know what, let's do one of these numbers here. I'm trying to get the clip of uh of D'Angelo White telling him, yo, give me give me some money. I just thought that was funny, like, come on. Did y'all not think that was funny? Cause I did. Hmm. All right, there we go. Now we figured it out. Now we figured it out. All right, y'all ready to listen? Let's listen to D'Angelo White tell these people, give me some money for my testimony because I feel like y'all owe me. Here we go. Hold up, y'all. Let me let me go back so y'all can really hear this puppy. All right, y'all. Throw me some, man. Bro, you me what? Something like what? How much? How much you talking about? Twenty. Twenty dollars. Yeah, you dealing with three of the realest police officers you have come across. Off top. You dealing with three of the realest, and trust me, I understand your situation. And you just getting out all that good shit. But if you come to me just on some real shit, like hey. I just got out of jail. I need something. Could you throw me a little something? I get that. But do you really? Huh? I can respect the other way. 100%. Because I ain't better than nobody. I come from the same shit you come from. But don't try to try me on no fuck shit. (laughs) Like, pay me to pick this nigga out. It don't work like that. Either you gonna do it, brother man, or you not. I, I thought that was hilarious. Y'all have to let me know what y'all felt about that. I thought that was silly. And and if I was in that courtroom, I would have been laughing. If I was in the jury, I would have been laughing. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Uh, T. Morton said the fact that uh, she didn't have a report is problematic for me. I agree because um, as they were doing the argument about why there wasn't a report from the gang experts, uh, Brian Steele and Shard was citing a ruling that the judge made back in November where he said they are required to turn over a report. So once again, like I told y'all a couple weeks ago, this judge is like a millennial parent, like millennial parents. We tell our kids that they got to do something, but it's kind of like a suggestion. We not as hard on our kids as, as our parents was on us. Like we kind of just let them just do whatever. That's how this judge is in this courtroom. Like he kind of just make a suggestions. They're supposed to be court orders, but he's just letting them really just do whatever they feel like doing. So uh, because he he said that even the gang experts are supposed to uh, are supposed to turn over reports. It's funny because he said that and then they went to some case law or not even case law. Attorney Love said, hey, I did a lot of cases like this and gang experts never have to turn over reports. And then Judge Glanville is like, you're right. Gang experts don't normally turn over reports. So then why back in November did you make a ruling saying that they had to? So, you know, he's just flipping and flopping. He's just doing whatever. 
Paris said, Brian Steele and the defense must be the stepkids. They are, the way they're getting treated up in there. But guess what? The way they're getting treated up in there, I'm feeling is leading to a mistrial. I think the judge is just doing whatever he can to not throw this whole case away. But he's just like giving the state chance after chance. And it's, and it's, and then by the time it gets to the point where he makes this, where he rules that this is a mistrial, all of us will say, and even people that's on the state side will say, uh, I guess so. It's, it's, not, it's not much argument you're going to be able to put up because I, because even today, uh, even one of these days this week, when they, when they started talking about like, you know, they could do this later down the road and they're closing arguments, he said, well, if the case gets to that point, pretty much like this, this is damn near on the way to a mistrial. Like, it's like he's hinting at it, but he's just trying to give the state a chance to figure this stupid argument out because they have been making a lot of foolish arguments. Uh, so then, uh, we, so now we get to Tuesday or whatever. Okay. So Paris says someone said that he's afraid to make a mistrial because he wrongly called for a mistrial in the past case and got reprimanded. Uh, if he gets reprimanded here, it'll be for political reasons. It won't be because he was incorrect though, because this should be a mistrial probably should have been a mistrial and the whole should have been a mistrial. We're going to really get back to that when we talk about Keith Adams monologue that he gave where he served up the state. So now Tuesday we get here and they're back to the DK, one of the DK interviews where DK is just, oh man, they, what they were calling it was spilling the beans. I didn't look up the legal terminology for why they kept on using the term spilling the beans, but he for sure was spilling the beans. He was spilling it all. Uh, so DK is in there. They asking him like, uh, DK is like, Hey, you know, um, pretty much like I'm like, I'm just caught up in this. I, I really, I don't play with guns like that. I steal cars. Like I don't do that type of stuff. I don't shoot people, but these dudes, they got long, like I can't tell them no. And I can't like, I, I'm not on the level that they on. I'm a pipsqueak is what he said. He like, I'm a small fish. I'm a small frog in the pond or whatever that he said. And, um, and it's just he he's just acting like the little like the little scared victim or whatever when 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 them people come around. I guess when the real ones come around, like Nard and, and the people Nard be with. And if if OG Bentley makes calls like that based on like the little interaction that he that he didn't even have an interaction. He seen somebody that he thought was following him, and then they was talking to his girl, and he said, Call the killers. So if if they like make them type of calls at that much drop of a dime, I can see why DK will be a little bit shook. To, to tell them no and be, you know, I, I wouldn't have a problem telling them no, but I'm just saying I could see why DK would be like scared. Right. So uh, I think I have a, oh, 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 I got a clip. So they, this was one piece that they also argued about was the fact that essentially they went back to this whole narrating piece. Why are they allowing Detective Gaither to essentially narrate this whole video, first of all, because the jury is supposed to watch a video and gather from it whatever they gather from it. You're not supposed to tell them what you're hearing. Remember uh, some weeks back when they had to bring out transcripts to give to the jury? They gave the jury transcripts because essentially the audio was kind of hard to understand. So the jury had to read the wording as best, uh, you know, the wording was transcribed as best it could be and gather from it whatever they gather from it. But nobody in the courtroom could explain to them what was being said. They had to just hear it and interpret whatever they were hearing. And then when the testimony was over, I mean, when the video was done being played, they took the transcripts back from them. So it's really to say we can't we can't shape their mind around what they're hearing. We have to let them hear what they hear and gather from it, whatever they gather from it. Essentially, that's that's what it is. You can't give. And, and it was crazy to me because I'm like, if if Gaither shouldn't be given this narration, why did they let her do it for so long before they objected to it? Like that, by the time they objected, it was Tuesday. She had been testifying, giving narration over videos and, and all type of stuff for days at that point. So I'm surprised that it took so long for them to give that type of um, joint. But either way, the, the judge agreed. <laughs> the judge was like, yeah, she shouldn't be narrating. And um, like the jury is. So I'm guessing the judge just was waiting for them to pretty much object to it because they've been doing it for days. Definitely doing it for days. Uh, but let's play. Let's let's play the clip of a. Uh, of DK talking about these guys being being kingpins and scary fellas and and how they went from Red Cartel to uh to what they eventually went became. Give me a second to pull it up, guys. Okay, we got the media player. 
Um, there we go. Can y'all see that? Can y'all see that? Let's get to it. Now, y'all, y'all heard her ask, how did it go from real music to all of that? The, uh, now, the, the, I don't know if y'all remember, but the reason that they was arguing about that specific situation is because the state was about to... Ha- so they, they played what DK's answer was. And what DK's answer was, was very incoherent. Like, you couldn't really understand what he was saying. And the state was asking Gaither... Did DK pretty much did DK understand your question when you asked it to him? And they wanted her to say yes. And then he was going to say, tell us what he said, because we really couldn't hear what he said. We couldn't understand what he was saying. The defense objected to that. They said, why is she about to tell the jury what this man said? They supposed to listen and, and gather whatever they gather from it. She can't tell them what what was said by this man. So especially because she doesn't even really remember. She's trying to piece together her memory about what was happening in that room. She don't really remember what he said. She's trying to listen to it the same way everybody else is. So, no, uh, absolutely not. And the judge agreed. Absolutely not. She cannot narrate that. So, that's dead. Clip it. Um, now, oh, we're going we, we, to skip forward. So, now, that, so now you get um, DK. You know, they play some more of it. Also, the judge told them, that this thing is is getting cumulative. You keep playing stuff that's over and over. We keep hearing the same stuff as what the judge pretty much saying. Stop doing that. Uh, move on. So then they they even tell the state, don't play anything that you played already. Also, don't go back and try to let the jury hear it again. Stop it. Like move forward. Stop playing the same thing over and over. I don't even know. Like <laughs> attorney love does not take no for an answer, and it's crazy to me because she will keep on saying that she will keep arguing something when the judge is telling her not to do something. Now, so then, you know, they still keep playing. I, I'm I'm looking at this like, yo, DK, I, I hope DK really stopped claiming the gang a long time ago because if he was kind of still like one foot in and one foot out like Mott, like nowadays, and they got this these type of videos now that's public to the world, man, I can't even like <laughs> that's a safety hazard to be to because he was in his 20s. He wasn't like 15, 16. He was in his 20s in these videos. Like DK is not too much younger than me, so he he was in there giving it up. 